Hello, and welcome to Structure and Flow. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan, the CEO and founder of the Path to Profit Academy. Here hey, with co you today <laughs> with my co-founder, Mr. Brad Dobson. That's right. That's me. <laughs> Every day. So we are so excited. We're going to be really geeking out, getting a little focused on one particular tactic that we use in our business on a regular basis to keep us organized and productive. Timelines. Timelines. I think the first time I was introduced to this was one of the uh, first times I actually went to any type of um, coaching with, with our friend Peter. And he used it. Oh, to me, that's a whole different kind of time. I know, but it, my mind goes to timelining. Uh, really, this was uh, an NLP exercise, which I'm not really a fan of, but it actually um, it did bring up some stuff for me. Um, and so I think of timelines that way. And of course, I used them a ton in, in my software career because it's a way for everybody to see what the larger arc of a, a something is going to look like. And it gives people a chance to put milestones on them. Yeah, it's so fascinating that you went there with the with the coaching piece because as a coaching tool is very powerful and it's reflective of your life from birth forward. Mm -hmm. But what we're talking mm -hmm. about today is looking into the future, not reflecting backwards. Yep. And so timelines can be used in a lot of different contexts. Another context that we hear about timelines, novelists and screenwriters use timelines to plot their stories and mm -hmm. to see what's going to happen when. And it's fun to see, see them hanging on a wall with all the different pieces and movable parts. I know I've seen some of uh, Rick's before, his timelines and how he creates his books. It's, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, and you can't, go to, you can't go to storyboard before you get the timeline done, That's right? That's <laughs> right, exactly. And so before we dive any deeper into what the heck is a timeline and how is it going to help you improve your productivity, I want to share the quote of the day. And this is from Todd Henry from The Accidental Creative. I'm a big fan of his work. I've been uh, totally binge listening to his oh, yeah. short podcast this week. And he has so many What's the podcast great called? tips. It's called The Accidental Creative. Oh, great. Yeah. And uh, he's got some really smart things to say about creatives and productivity. And this quote says that we need to fall in love with the process, not just the end product of our work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so true, and I've seen I've seen that in in other contexts where um, you know that that's where you're going to get that fulfillment day to day. Look mm -hmm. for that fulfillment day to day, as opposed to only getting the uh, the payoff at the end. Well, and it's something that I think I've learned through my creative process of learning to call myself an artist or to be a painter is that most of the time making art for me is not about the end product. It's great when I get a pretty one like the flowers behind us, but that doesn't happen all the time. And in fact, most of my paintings have five paintings underneath that were just layers. And so learning to enjoy the journey when it comes to building a creative business can feel a little bit tricky because most of us got into business because we love the end product. We love the writing, the directing, the recording, the painting, the programming, whatever it is that mm -hmm. the creative thing that you do is making jewelry and you love that finished product and you feel excited because you have something to sell. But there's all these other things that have to happen throughout the course of your business in order to get to a sellable end product. So I'm curious about why you ended up on this quote. I mean, clearly you're interested in, in the accidental creative. I almost said the accidental tourist. Um, and that's cool. But how does, excuse me, how does this relate to, to timelines? So to me, timelines give you a visual representation of the journey to get you to the end product. And what happens is when we can see our destination out there in front of us, whether that's a product, a book, a website, or launching an entire new business, we can see this big goal out there. Mm -hmm. But unless we know, unless we have a sense of what the markers are, what the milestones are gotcha. along the journey, we tend to severely underestimate the amount of time it will actually take 
right. to get something accomplished. And when you start to plot it out on a timeline, and so physically a timeline, from my perspective, get a big whiteboard, a big long piece of paper, or a bunch of pieces of paper that you could tape up on the wall and move around and start to look at what are the things that you're saying that you want to accomplish in a certain amount of time. For example, we're coming up on the third quarter or the fourth quarter of 2018. And we personally have a whole bunch of things that we're trying to launch. And I did this process recently for one of my art projects. I want to launch a new membership site called the Art Journaling Club. And when I sat down and started working out the timeline, I'm like, oh man, this is way too aggressive. Right. There's no way that given my other tasks that I have inside of our company, that I have the time to launch this much content in this amount of time. So it gave me a really realistic perspective of what's possible. And so for us, we have three or four timelines going on at the same time for different aspects of our businesses. Right, right. So how long should a timeline be? Great question. I think it um, it varies. For me, I like to look at a 12-month timeline. We mm. tend to do, to look at... 12 months at a time, at least once a year. And I think it also depends on your sense of urgency around what it is that you're creating. Are you just trying to do a 90 day project? Then you need to do a 90 day timeline. And the timeline is an important piece of project planning. We talked about project plans in episode 107, maybe a couple other episodes as well. But inside of a project plan to say launch a website or complete and market a book, there's a lot of milestones that have to be met. And so you need to be able to see those. And what I know about creatives and what Brad has learned about working with me is we have to be able to see it. One of my clients did this using a spreadsheet format right. so that she could see things in the spreadsheet and realize where things overlapped or where she was being too aggressive in her, some of her goals. So I like pieces of paper and markers whiteboards and markers are great. You could also use a spreadsheet to mm -hmm. visualize this timeline. Yeah. 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 I tend to think of them, uh, like you said, when, and we talked about with, with project planning and, and, you know, all the different planning, we start with a, a one year timeline and then, uh, and then work, we sort of decompose that into quarters. And, and then, I mean, it, it can be used for a month. Um, and in fact, I mean, gosh, you could use it for your vacation if you wanted to, if you're, you know, <laughs> if you have travel plans and stuff like that, where you, you know, you do need to actually have a, an actual timeline of events that are going to happen when you're traveling around, say if you went to Europe uh, and you wanted to get to six different cities, that type of thing. But um, I think mostly we, we see them, we use them for the one year and the one quarter type of time frame. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the, the best. Or if you know that you're going to be starting a new project, that's a big meaty project, whether that's foundational to your business. Like I said, a book is a great idea. Maybe you're going to launch a new course. Um, what are some other ideas of project? You're going to launch a new line of jewelry. You're going to launch a horror short film. We have one client who makes horror movies. Mm -hmm. Whether you're going to host a live event, if you were going to host a live event, you would probably need a 12-month timeline or at least a six-month timeline to make sure that you're meeting all your milestones for that project. Um, my friend Shannon Hernandez and I are hosting a retreat in October. I'll tell you more about that later. But we have a timeline starting with we can't fill the retreat until we have the sales page and we can't have the sales page until we have the copy and the sales video. So when you start to plot it out and make sure that you're on track, it helps you to measure your progress along the way and to be able to visually see where you are. Are you going fast enough? Are you going slow enough? We did this for a recent launch. Mm -hmm. So we were launching a new course called The Productive uh, Creative. And in that, we were able to really week by week look at the different tasks that needed to happen to have a successful launch, both internal and external tasks. Yeah. And in fact, I was doing some research for this episode. And, and one of the things that came up was um, <clears throat> for folks that are just starting their business, um, setting up a timeline for, you know, I, I got the bank accounts or... I got a, I got my LLC formed. If you, if got you need, if you need to license. do that, got my sales tax license, mm -hmm. got a, a basic website up, you know, timeline is perfect for that. So you're not trying to cram it, do everything at once. And you know, when things are dependent on each other, 
that you can, uh, you have them in the right order mm -hmm. and you know when you can move on to the next milestone uh, based on, on how you've done so far. And I think that's a great point that you said about you can, um, huh, I just totally lost my train of thought. Oh, about the dependencies or? About the dependencies, about seeing the, thank you, the sequence and, and prioritization. I'm a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> you just remembered what you said. I never remember what I said. But sometimes those milestones, in order to reach a milestone, when you realize how much work there is underneath that, mm -hmm. then you might realize that the milestone was a little bit too aggressive and you need to give it some more time. So um, I like to think of the timeline as like the, the top layer of the, of the planning process, just underneath your business plan, that next step really is creating the timeline so that you can get that sense of what it is that you're creating, where you're going, and how fast you want to go. And some people move a lot faster than others, and you have to move at your own pace. Mm -hmm. I see you have a note in here about, about pruning out projects. Yes. I think if, and, and you mentioned something about this before, where we have multiple different timelines on the go. If you, if you find yourself putting items from different bright, shiny ideas on the same timeline, yes. stop, go back, <laughs> you're doing it wrong <laughs> and, and start over again. Um, this, the timeline, I mean, yeah, there's going to be some cases where you could do that, but for the most part, this timeline needs to represent uh, the arc of one piece of a project or one project. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Todd Henry talked about this. That's why I put it in there in a, in a recent podcast I was listening to on my walk this week, where he talks about really looking at your projects and your to-do list and that dream list and that goal list and say, you know, uh, this is a question I always ask, is this really something I'm going to do? Uh, is this what I love? The question he asked that I thought was so brilliant was, you know, is this a good idea or is it a great idea? And if it's just a good idea, are you willing to let it go? Are you willing to prune it from the to-do to list? Could someone else do it better than you? Is there someone on your team that you could pass an idea off to that could actually do a better job than you? So there's a lot of things that you can look at, at the pieces and the steps along a timeline to make sure that it's a great idea. The thing about creatives is that we have lots of ideas. So ideas are not our challenge, but clarity around how to execute those ideas is often where we struggle and get stuck. And a timeline is one of the fastest way to get clarity around all the steps of a project to actually bring it to fruition. So I have some other ideas that you can use a timeline for um, or <laughs> things that we use it for that we would suggest. You can definitely use it for your editorial output. If you're generating content, um, you can plan ahead for a year worth of maybe monthly themes, um, have those plotted out on a, on a year. Similarly for promotions, um, you, you might have a timeline of promotions and both editorial and promotional timelines can then focus around, you can have milestone type of dates that relate to holidays or other uh, major major things on your schedule. So perhaps you have a live event, perhaps you have a big build up to a Black Friday sale or a Super Bowl, or whatever, whatever event it is or multiple events during the year, back to school, anything like that. Or, or um, trade shows or conferences that are relevant to, that you're gonna go to that perhaps um, you would wanna build your promotions and editorials to, to build towards that having those out on a, on a timeline, this single arc line that you've drawn, I'm, my hand's off the camera, but anyways, single He's arc drawing line. drawing <laughs> line over there, really, he is, he can't see I'm, him. I'm not the hand talker, but <laughs> that single arc line with, with. Are you saying I am? Yeah, with dots, <laughs> with dots along it that um, yeah. can, can show those things. So editorial, promotional, I had another one in my mind, it'll come back to me. But. Well, think about your training peaks and how that really is a, a timeline concept as well. When, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you're training for a sports event. Yeah. There's a timeline with a clear end result, successful completion of the event. Yeah. And for, you know, for training, if you want to get a little bit geeky about the athletics or geeky. endurance training, there's a, a concept of periodicity where there's, um, you know, you, you slowly, you build up to something hard and then you ratchet back for a week and then you build up to something harder over a bunch of weeks and then you ratchet back. So you're, you're continually have this, uh, growing saw pattern of, um, 
so that's that's kind of a, a workload type of thing as it as it relates to endurance sports. But then those are scheduled on the timeline towards a race that's that's out there in the future or some event that you're gonna that you're gonna do. So it's a similar type of of um, thing. It is. I, and uh, you've been really excited about the, the Training Peak software, and, and we're actually considering developing something similar for marketing and. Yeah, yeah. If we guidelines. can come up with the, the right way to do it, I think it's, uh, it would be an effective tool for uh, all of our. Yeah. All of our clients. Yeah. Brad's been digging deep into his programming happy place lately That's right. and working on some new programming projects. So it's, it's exciting. And we sat down and created timelines and here's the thing. So he has an idea for a, a widget plugin that he's creating and his estimation of his timeline was actually longer than it's taking him. So he's mm -hmm. actually going to be ready to launch it sooner but we put a timeline in place that took into account the fact that we're going to be gone for several weeks in August on vacation. And so timelines need to take into account your lifestyle as well. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the beauties of a timeline is being able to really um, make sure that you're not being too aggressive in your timeline and not overfill it. But what do you put on a timeline? So this is one of the, the things that we also wanted to share with you before we finish up today. And there's a couple of different things that you should put on a timeline. First of all, it needs a, an end result, right? It needs an actual deadline at the end of the timeline of what you're working towards. Well, you could also put a dot on today. And you <laughs> could put start. a dot on today at the start. <laughs> you, so, so you got A and B. <laughs> you're gonna get uh, from A to B. Well, we've got, first we've got A and Z. Whatever. But we always start at Z and work backwards is my point. Uh, I don't necessarily. But if you don't have an a, a inkling of where it is that you're going and what you want the mm, end result to be saying. and by when, mm -hmm. you could flounder for months, years, decades. Yeah. Right? It's like all those people that, you know, um, <clears throat> are supposed to be finishing their dissertations. and aren't. <laughs> But that's another story. So that was not me. I finished my dissertation in a very timely manner. And, but so deadlines, like what's the end result that you want? Mm -hmm. And by when do you want it? So this works especially well for quarterly project plans. If you're trying to create something within a three month period of time. You also want what the milestones are on there. How are you going to know if you're making progress towards your goals? And those should be the major things, like I said. Um, yeah, this is not a task list, get, right? Get the initial website going. Yes. That type of thing. Yeah. And so their milestones are not tasks. So remember, this is big picture perspective to know that you're going to be on track. So if I'm at point A and I have zero website, that first milestone might simply be decide on a domain name and go purchase the domain name mm -hmm. and find hosting right? and choose my platform. And so there's all these things that have to happen before you actually launch a simple website. So it's just understanding what those milestones are, how will you measure them so that you can track your progress as you go along. And then you're going to want launch dates along the way as well as milestones. So one milestone is getting the domain name, actually taking a website live, may be an actual launch date that's, you know, 30 days into a 90 day project plan. Right. Right. I would also say you're going to want to add, um, any, like Manette said earlier, any vacations or major calendar type of events mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that are going to affect your schedule just so that when you look at that timeline, you don't forget about them. Um, you may have said, mm -hmm. Hey, I've got this milestone is next, but actually I only have three work days between yeah. that work, the last milestone and this milestone because of all sorts of other calendar issues. So, yeah, so true. So I, I'm giggling because I'm visualizing we have a 12 month wipe off calendar that we use for a lot of our, our timelining and it has all the kids activities and school start and end dates and their travel plans, football games, drumline events, you know, all the different things that they're involved in because it would be easy to forget mm -hmm. and it would be easy to schedule a big launch, right? When we have to spend a whole Saturday driving our daughter three hours away for a drumline competition. So you want to make sure you're including all that and please don't forget to include time for rest and renewal. We've talked a lot about right. that on this show, but timelines again are the best way to create a visual representation and a high level roadmap of where you are today 
where you want to go and the milestones along the way that are going to get you there. I think we got it. I think we got it. What are we going to talk about next time? Uh, what do we got? Oh, in episode 113, we're going to talk about team communication, something I'm not always that great at. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to dive into all of, uh, all of, uh, let's say just things I could work on. <laughs> That'd be a total therapy and, session. Is that and, what you're saying? Yeah. And how we use technology to improve our communication. Yeah. And boost and our productivity. That's right. Because communication is at the core of productivity. Even if you're just communicating with yourself, we're going to look at how you can improve communication and boost productivity at the same time. And as always, don't forget to go and take the unique productivity style quiz if you haven't done that already at pathtoprofitacademy.com forward slash UPS quiz. We'll have all the links in the show notes and we'll see you live on the next episode.